Oh hell internet, Thomas Hobbes released his great political work Leviathan in 1651 and it's in four parts. Part four is called Of the Kingdom of Darkness. When spiritual darkness enters a commonwealth, it's like a mist that makes it hard to see clearly and stops the sovereign from telling everyone what to do. Hobbes believes that spiritual darkness is any break with the traditions that the sovereign makes civil law inside the commonwealth. This can happen in three ways. By mistaking scripture, by taking things from heathen religions, or by using the traditions of earlier cultures, especially the Greeks and especially, especially Aristotle. Hobbes starts with darkness in general, but his main target is the Catholic Church, which was not popular in England at that time. Chapter 44 is called Of Spiritual Darkness from Misinterpretation of Scripture. Hobbes says that the biggest mistake from Scripture is believing that Christ's kingdom began at the resurrection, and now the Pope is Christ's governor on earth. This leads to two sovereigns and double taxes, but worst of all, it means that authority is confused. The second biggest mistake is that consecration is actually conjuration. Priests don't have magical powers, so all of the rituals of the Catholic Church, baptism, marriage, exorcism, and especially transubstantiation, are just tricks to fool the everyday people and actually abuse God's name. The third biggest mistake from scripture is the misunderstanding of eternal life, eternal torment, and second death, which Hobbes has already explained in part three. Chapter 45 is called Of Demonology and Other Relics of the Religion of the Gentiles. Hobbes reminds us that our sight connects to imagination, which creates images we can mistake for real, and these images are called phantasms. However, this wasn't known by ancient people, and so they made the idea of spirits. All spirits are demons, and demonology is all the rituals of ancient religions that are meant to avoid or control them. In Christian commonwealths, the word demon meant evil spirits because all the good ones must be part of the spirit of God, right? Demonology is a problem because worshipping a phantasm as a god is idolatry, which is a sin. Worship is the right way to show honour to something that we value, but because God cannot be compared to anything, it's difficult to worship God without idolatry. Hobbes' explanation mostly works. It's not a sin to draw God, but it is a sin to believe that you have captured something divine. There is a side note about the canonization of saints and the Pope's title of Pontifex Maximus, which are not at all Christian, but are taken from the old Roman religion. And if they are not idolatry, then they do come very close to it. Chapter 46 is Of Darkness from Vain Philosophy and Fabulous Traditions. Hobbes defines philosophy, but it's really what we would call science, which is using reason and evidence to show that things work, although he might get a bit carried away sometimes. He says that the earlier Greek and Jewish traditions of philosophy and politics are full of mistakes and superstitions which Christianity, and especially the Catholics, has accepted. This is the vain philosophy and fabulous traditions. Hobbes is very clear again, there is just one world, everything in it is physical, and nothing affects it from the outside. Except God. Maybe. Somehow. Spiritual essences are just a misunderstanding of how we use the verb to be, and the church uses this to say that faith or wisdom or virtue are qualities that the church itself can provide. Hobbes considers all of this to be absurd. This and other misunderstandings lead to some mistaken beliefs about civil power. The final chapter is of the benefit proceeding from such darkness and to whom it accrueth. Chapter 47 is the accusation that Hobbes has been making for half of the book. We should always ask who benefits because the person who benefits from something is probably the author of it. Hobbes is clear that the Pope and the Catholic Church benefit from confusion about sovereign power in the world, although he does also blame the sovereigns of Christian commonwealths for letting the Church gain so much civil power. There are many places that the Church has come into the political space, and he decides that these have led to three knots that tie the liberty of the subjects. First, 
that the clergy can socially exile people with excommunication, second, that they took the name of bishops, and third, that the Pope, by claiming the Roman title of Pontifex Maximus, had authority over all the bishops in Christendom. At the end of the chapter, Hobbes compares the Pope and his kingdom of God to the king of fairies from English folklore, a kingdom of illusion which tricks people from the civil sovereign who is the real author of their political actions. This false kingdom only has power because it is able to fool people with its glamour. And he says this can also be seen in other forms of Christianity, although perhaps not as much. So that is the final part of Hobbes' Leviathan. Thanks for listening and bye for now.